All right, high rollers, today one of my favorites, a guy we've had on a number of times before, third at the 1999 main event, winner of the grand final of late night poker across the pond, poker ambassador with Party Poker. And from what I can see, especially on Twitter these days, it seems like Party Poker has been making a real push in the marketplace. He's a poker player, columnist, and commentator. Podrick Parkinson joins us. Podrick, welcome back to the show, man. Thanks for being a high roller today. God, I, I listened to that build-up. I was wondering who, who you had on. <laughs> I always enjoy being on your show, pal. We always enjoy having you. Happy belated St. Paddy's Day. Always wanted to ask you this. You know, I know what the rest of the world does on St. Paddy's Day. What do the Irish actually do? Well, they just go out to a little bit of drinking, don't get too excited, fall home at three o'clock in the morning, it's just like any other day. <laughs> <laughs> Generally speaking, uh, you know, St. Patrick's Day is um, celebrated more overseas than here. There were an awful lot of Americans in town for it, but the Irish just take it cool because uh, they used to shut the pubs early on St. Patrick's Day, so people didn't like it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but it'll probably catch on here. You know, we don't do the green beer stuff and all of that. But, you know, in Ireland, it's kind of St. Patrick's Day every day. I, I can't understand how, how they got this guy, St. Patrick. I mean, he's the, he's the patron saint to drink, and they gave him to Ireland. I mean, we, we, we had enough problems already. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I got to congratulate you on your appointment with Party Poker as the Irish ambassador, and you're busy these days. By the way, you're back in Ireland, right? Tell us the story, because you, you uh, spent a lot of time in Paris. Yeah, yeah, I spent 20 years in Paris. I only went over there for two weeks. And I got kind of delayed. And then uh, at Christmas um, 2015, you, you know, uh, the aviation club in Paris got closed and so did just about every other place except for one club. So, you know, getting in there and getting into a game was, was becoming very tricky. I came home for Christmas. I, I was told they were going to change the, the French laws. So I was either going to move back to Paris or commute. But, you know, the French being the French, um, it's now uh, 15 months later and nothing has changed. But uh, so God knows how long I'm here for this time. But, you know, when, when I came home, it had, it had always been a, a dream of mine to get the, you know, the grassroots of Irish poker involved in, the, you know, in, in the big occasions. And that I, I kind of had the feeling that... Uh, you know, when the poker explosion came along, the little guy got left behind. And it was all about the superstars and the TV and the, and the live streaming and the pictures and the whole lot. And the guys that are the, the lifeblood of poker in Ireland. You know, the guys who'd be playing in pubs and clubs three or four nights a week. And I mean, and I'm talking about like over 90% of the Irish players began to feel that... Uh, that there was a whole big difference between big time poker and what they were doing. I'd been talking to, um, luckily, I'd been talking to my friends in in Dust Till Dawn, guys I'd known for years, like Scally and Rob and all of that. And uh, I was telling them that I'd love to re engage the Irish grassroots player with, 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 with the big time. So uh, I managed to talk them into which wasn't too difficult because they wanted to do it anyway because they love Ireland, uh, putting on a spectacular in Killarney last year. Killarney uh, is probably well known to tourists and all of that, but Killarney is a, is a town with a population of 9,000 down in the, in the southwest of Ireland, like miles away from everywhere. And somehow or other, after four or five months, where well, Fitton Gavin was involved with me in this, I w was all over Ireland. I was in maybe 60 or 70 different pubs till four or five in the morning, talking to the little guys. And we put on a tournament in Killarney where Dust Till Dawn and Party Poker guaranteed quarter of a million for a buy-in of a uh, hundred bucks. And... Uh, and amazingly, the guys, uh, the Irish grassroots responded and we made the guarantee, which nobody thought was any way possible. Like, you know, there's probably only uh, 10 players <laughs> locally. And all of a sudden we got this quarter of a million uh, guarantee getting made. So uh, we were all pretty excited about that. And everybody had a ball and the grassroots guys were all getting excited that it was all about them again. So when Party asked me to be uh, their ambassador in Ireland, uh, I was absolutely delighted. And it's more of the same. We've got a Grand Prix tour going here where uh, we've had a stop in Cork. We're going to have Grand Prix Dublin at the end of April. Killarney is going to be on again at the start of September with a, a huge guarantee for a smallish buy-in. 
So it's more of the same, but it, it's it's really exciting. I mean, you know, uh, I suppose, you know, when I say that poker was all about the, the big guys and all of that, well, like I was one of them. You know, I was the guy flying around the world, staying in the hotels and, uh, you know, thinking I was a great guy. And uh, maybe I forgot where I came from. But it's, you know, it's when you go back to, you know, a pub in a, a place like Mount Melick or Clifton or something like that, you know, in the arsehole and nowhere. And there's all these guys in there, you know, at two or three o'clock in the morning with pints all over the place. And they're in there playing poker and, uh, and laughing their heads off. And, you know, there's all sorts of banter to and fro. It's fantastic. You know, uh, I, sometimes you, you have to go back to where you came from to, to figure out where you're going. And I've got kind of locked into doing this at the moment. And um, it's going really, really well. And I'm having the time of my life. I'll tell you what, it looks like Party Poker is having the time of its life these days, too. All over Twitter, recent employment of John Duffy, of course, a legend of the game. You're with Party Poker now. Really seems like the online site is uh, making a push for live events as well. You're playing the Irish Open coming up, and then you got a big event in April as well. Party Poker Millions. Yeah, it's like uh, Party Poker are kind of booking the trend. And uh, they're really pushing the, the live end of things. You know, party probably got a bit unlucky, you know, when the legislation changed in America, because Party and, uh, and 888 at the time, uh, well, I think Party had already gone public and 888 were going public. They had to abide by uh, by the law. So both the companies got devastated by uh, sort of overnight. Well, let me just say something here quick, Potter, because I did some research, buddy. I know you'll be surprised. I'll be very surprised. Party Poker launched in 2001, was the largest online card room until 2006. By 2008, was attracting 3.6 million online visitors a year. And then, of course, we saw what happened in America. So, yeah, it took a bit of a hit then. Yeah, but they're turning it around. They've got this association uh, in England with Dust Till Dawn. They've got this millions thing going on, which is fantastic. You know, it's all very, very, uh, it's all very live orientated. And it, there's a complete buzz about it. You know, they're really, really going for it. And, and they've got the they've got the right people involved. It's very player friendly. And like, I've, I'm not saying that because I'm getting paid to say it. I mean, I, w I, I wouldn't be involved in this if I didn't believe it. It's very player friendly. And uh, they are going for it. I mean, they're going to get back uh, to where they should be. And they're going to get back in a nice way. Millions is unbelievable. Uh, you know, like uh, on Monday, you can play sort of phase one of this millions thing in Dublin, like for 600 euros. And, uh, you know, you can play it day two here and then move on to um, dust till dawn next month. But there's six million guaranteed, one million guaranteed for the winner. I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. You know, when... Other sites are phasing out their uh, their live stuff. Party are, are just upping it and upping it. And as long as the, the live players respond, uh, that's going to keep on happening. I mean, I, I think Party and Dust Till Dawn are a tremendous, uh, are a tremendous mix because they're all uh, very ambitious. Everybody's hard working and, you know, and, and fired up by the whole mission. And it's, it's very hard not to get fired up if you're around all these people. Because, you know, it's like... <laughs> It's like everybody's having fun. It's a big game. And uh, you're right, the hiring of John Dutty was uh, was fantastic. They tell me he's uh, he's president of, uh, of, of of the live end of things. Yeah, Party Poker Live, that's right. The day after I, I, I heard about his appointment, and I, I said, what does the president do doing that? He said, I have absolutely no idea. And he's, he's, he says, what does an ambassador do? I said, I don't know either. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of funny. I mean, um, like I can remember Dusty back at the first Poker Million in the Isle of Man. This guy, I mean, he looked like a very sane guy all the way through to the final table. I remember the day of, of the final table. Uh, I was sitting there with uh, Helmut and Negriano and a few American guys having breakfast. And this guy, Dusty, was sitting at a table beside us all on his own. He was at the final table of this tournament. But nobody really rated him because it, it looked like he'd been playing really tight. And he sat there very respectful. Helmut went over and was trying to get him to wear some logo or other. And Dusty just nodded the head. And then he went in and played like an absolute maniac. <laughs> By the time the dust had settled, he'd won a million pounds. It, it was fantastic. And uh, and he's a lovely guy, Johnny. But uh, i, I got to tell you, the guy, I was talking to Tom from Party Poker, and I said, Dutty's a good sign. And I said, well, what's he doing? 
And he said, well, he comes into the office and uh, he said he's helping us out with, a, with advice about the ambassador. So uh, I've got some very bad news for you. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see him on board. I mean, he's, he's a guy that's, uh, I mean, talk about player friendly. He is one. So, I mean, he knows what people want and I'm, I'm expecting to see great things from him. I'll tell you what, Padraig, as a poker fan, you know, I'm on Twitter all the time. I see a lot of different announcements from a lot of different companies, poker companies, gambling companies. But when Party Poker sends out a message that John Duffy has been signed, I took notice because he's a big name. This guy's had great success. Yeah, I was absolutely surprised because, uh, like, I, I think I was, um, a few days later, I was down in Cork. And, uh, you know, the Cork, the Cork people are... All, all of them, to a man, they're begrudgers. But a couple of guys down there, I was, I was out in the smoking area, and guys, I mean, these are Irish guys, and they're talking about, uh, they were talking about John Dutty. You know, they brought it up, being a great signing for party poker. And it's happened to me in a couple of places around Ireland since then. Even the Irish, uh, the Irish like Dutty, and we're pretty particular. Well, I've also done some more research into the site with respect oh to the... Oh my I God, have you gone mad in the head or what? <laughs> with respect to the... Uh... Irish Open coming up. Uh, by the way, Party Poker available in 14 different languages. It also offers dedicated networks for French and Italian based players via partypoker.fr and partypoker.it. And by the way, if you want to get in on the action at the Irish Open, Party Poker is offering sit and go tournaments 24 hours a day, satellites for the big event as well. Ireland, that's where tournament poker started, right, Padre? Yeah, it all started uh, when when Terry Rogers. Uh, I, I'm actually doing a series of blogs on this and card players, so you you catch it. I've gone back to the the Eccentrics Club when I started going there, and I'm doing a, a series of blogs on the characters used to be there. But uh, sure, Terry Rogers, he was uh, an Irish bookmaker, but he was a visionary, a marketing guy, and a bit of a nut job. But uh, you know, a nut job in a, in a in a very creative way. I mean, he walked into the World Series of Poker. There was probably 50 or 60 guys playing the main event. And Terry was there five minutes, and he could see the he could see the future. He could see the, the potential of this. And uh, then he met Benny Binion. The guys hit it off pretty good. Benny sort of told Terry his whole philosophy on the whole thing. You know, like, bring him in, feed him, give him drink, give him a few quid if they go broke when they're going home, and they'll be back. And uh, Terry could see that... Uh, amazing and the year you made it three made it i think the fourth was like the bubble boy of the final table i mean that was the year of ireland 1999 yeah yeah well i think six irish guys played it and mickey finn who was kind of irish american he wanted to be he wanted to be counted as a seventh irish guy and three of us made the the final table and mickey finn was 12th I mean, it was, like there was only 400 runners but it's, it's still pretty impressive well one of the guys you just mentioned and I, i'd be remiss if i didn't say how how big he is with party poker one of the f true faces of poker mike sexton i mean this guy's unbelievable well isn't it fantastic like uh mike and i have been good friends for i think 21 years now since we met in the in, in the bar in the metropole which i uh, i think you remember <laughs> <laughs> i do i do spent a night or two there. <laughs> I, 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 met, I met Mike there in 1996, and, uh, you know, there was all the players from the Victoria Club were hanging around there, 
And, you know, by about 8 o'clock in the morning, everybody was gone to bed and there was only me and Mike and the businessmen coming in for coffee, sitting in the bar. And he was telling me about, uh, you know, his vision for the future of poker. I thought, oh, my God, another nut job. But he was a nice guy in good company, so I listened to him. And uh, it turned out that that he was wrong. I mean, his vision his vision was right up to a point, but he didn't know it was going to be ten times even bigger than even he could see at the time. You know, Mike has always been a pretty... I mean, he's been a fantastic ambassador for uh, for poker. I mean, it was one of the pleasures of my professional life when Warren Lush, who was working for party at the time, asked if I'd like to do the official nomination of, of Mike for the for the Hall of Fame. I mean, I loved it. <laughs> but, um, I mean, that's quite an honor, isn't it? Oh, absolutely, yeah. You know, Mike has is actually he's been such a good ambassador that he's actually and such a sick gambler on the sports and that that he's often been very underrated as a poker player. But if you look at his record, it's it's not too shabby. And uh, you know, he's had to sit there for ten or twelve years. Twelve years, I think it was. Maybe it's more. Doing the WPT commentary with Vince. But in the last few years, he's got to play it. And uh, I was absolutely thrilled a few months ago when he actually won one. I mean, it was brilliant. I think he got like three or four hundred thousand or something. But he's actually won a WPT event when he's into his 60s. I think he was the second oldest winner of one. I spoke to him the next day and uh, he was over the moon. And then he's turned around again last month and made another final table. And uh, I think he came in fourth. So, like, uh, it, 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 it was fantastic for Mike. I mean, because, you know, the WPT, he was involved in setting it up at the very start. I mean, he was a consultant. He was involved with Lyle and that other geezer. And, uh, I mean, it, I suppose, you know, Mike's getting into his 60s. He'd be seen as old school. And I'm sure a lot of the guys who'd be watching it would think, well, you know, this guy's way past us. This is all old school commentary. He don't know what he's talking about. And now he's turned around and actually won one of them in final tables, you know, the next one he played. So I think that was fantastic. He was just over the moon. Yeah, I bet he was. I was going to say, Padre, that I, I would put you two in the same category. I don't want to date you, but I would call you guys pioneers, uh, members of the old guard. And I know that you're watching Mike Sexton there take down a WPT event for the first time, and I know that you weren't surprised at all. No, absolutely not. I mean, Mike has always been underrated as a player. But you know what? Mike and Vince have had the best seat in the house. You know, if you just talk to Jesse May, who's probably done more poker commentary than anybody, or maybe two, three times as much as anybody else. I mean, the amount he, he has learned by watching all of these final tables over and over and over, that, uh, you know, Mike might be in his 60s, but he's been watching the game evolve on TV and has been forced to watch all these hands. So um, it's not like he's he's, uh, he's a guy, you know, approaching 70 who's, who's still playing poker the way he played it when he was 28. You know, he's been watching the evolution. He sees all the good parts of the changes in the game, the bad parts, and his own game has adapted. So I'm absolutely thrilled. I was talking to him this morning, actually, because he, he's coming over to uh, to Nottingham next month for the, for the millions in Dust Till Dawn. you got to hand it to Dust Till Dawn and Party. I mean, they know how to turn on the party. I mean, they're guaranteeing six million. That's amazing. Yeah, and this is only the start of it. I mean, there's plans and plans. I don't know where it's all going to finish up, but I mean, six million in Nottingham with a million for the winner. Nottingham is a city to sort of north of London. It's probably an hour and a half drive or something. You know, when they opened up this dust to dawn place, I mean, I was the first guy to say that they were absolutely nuts. This is never going to work. And now all of a sudden, they've got an event there for six million. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, I mean, you talk about, we've been talking about visionaries like Benny Binion and Terry Rogers and Mike Sexton. But I mean, you, you got to put Rob Young right up there. Like, uh, as a guy, I mean, uh, you know, the old, some, some, some people see things as they are and ask why. Some guys see them like they could be and ask why not. <laughs> Rob's a why not guy. I mean, um. And, uh, I mean, th this is what's so exciting about the whole uh, Dust Till Dawn party poker uh, thing at the moment. I mean, party just turned around yesterday and guaranteed a million for uh, for 215 on on the 2nd of, of, of April. I mean, last week, the same tournament, they were guaranteeing 350,000. Now, now it's a million. I mean, it's incredible. Like, um, 
It's like these guys are really going for it, and it's, it's, it's a fun ride. Yeah, I hope you enjoy that ride. And speaking of fun rides, the timing of this whole spectacle is great, too, because you've got the Irish Open next weekend, or next week, and it gives people a chance to have fun because anybody who goes to the Irish Open has a great time. They've got a story to tell. They can maybe get rid of the hangover in time for Nottingham, right? Well, there's a whole bunch of stuff. It's like kind of Prague was a few years ago. There's a few days of the millions on at the start of the Irish Open. Then there's the Irish Open itself. And then there's the JP Masters, which is another pretty decent tournament. And it all overlaps with the Norwegian Open. Because well, the Irish Open and the Norwegian Open are kind of stuck together this year because uh, Easter wasn't available in the hotel. So, like, there's, uh, you know, there's like a 12-day festival of poker with, with just about everything on there. And then uh, you, you get a break of a week, and then there's uh, Dust Till Dawn, this six million. Then it's back to Dublin for the uh, for the Grand Prix with 150,000 guaranteed for 100 for, for 340 euros. It's just nonstop. I mean, you know, uh, it, it it looked like uh, you know live poker was dying, you know, when the when the recession hit. But I mean, it's it, it's back now in Ireland with the bang, and it's back. Uh, it's, it's going to finish up way bigger than it ever was before. I mean, poker is so popular over there, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, it kind of, poker kind of fits with the, the Irish psyche. I mean, I've heard all sorts of theories on it, that, that the, including that the Irish are the best liars in the world. <laughs> <laughs> but, I think that theory came from Mickey Finn. Uh, he kind of had a theory that, the, you know, we had the English as... Um, guests here for 800 years we leave it at that um but, uh, <laughs> that the irish actually have to lie to the english to survive so a little bit so sowing a little bit of confusion at the poker table is kind of in the dna <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'm not saying that the irish are natural liars but uh i mean if, if you want them to embellish a story or or even send you in the wrong direction uh, that's <laughs> you just ask an irish guy he, he's got it in his in his arsenal somewhere well, I know it's always a good time with the Irish. Listen, you're you're going to be busy because you're playing these events. I want you to pull a Mike Sexton so we can have you back on in May to talk about your victories, okay? So let's focus, buddy. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned earlier in the interview about the Aviation Club in uh, Paris, Bruno Fatuzzi. That was quite a legendary facility, wasn't it? Yeah, the Aviation Club was fantastic. I mean, uh, at one stage, I mean, you know, Bruno Fatuzzi, uh you know, he didn't, he, I, he's been nominated for the Hall of Fame. Maybe he should have got into it because, uh, I mean, he, he turned poker in France totally around and upside down. Because, like, uh, poker in France used to be pretty sleazy. You know, it was all run by uh, mafia and all of that kind of thing. And maybe wasn't, all the games certainly weren't straight. But the Aviation Club changed the whole thing and the whole philosophy. And uh, Bruno turned it, you know, from, you know, one table at four o'clock in the afternoon into a, a thriving club that became the, the hub of European poker. He had the WPT, he had the European Championships, the whole lot. And, uh, you know, 90% of that was down to Bruno and the other 10% maybe down to circumstances. But, um, you know, politics became involved in the thing in the end. And uh, just one day the aviation club got closed down. Uh, you know, there was a whole load of... Uh, I mean, there were a few clubs in... in um, in Paris closed down because people didn't people didn't like the the connections involved. But uh, you know the, the the guy that owned the aviation was uh, he was a member of Parliament for Corsica. But you know politics came into it. I think the left wing shut shut the aviation down for the laugh. There was a whole load of charges, most of them not substantiated. And then um, the boss guy in the aviation was uh, involved in the wrong right wing party. And uh, he was a real. He was on the re-elect uh, Sarkozy committee. So maybe the right wing uh, were also were quite happy to see them shut down. And uh, and it happened. And like a whole load of players are out of, are out of pocket over it. I mean, there's uh, there's guys who've had you know six figure sums on deposit in there or in in chips that haven't been paid and probably won't be paid. So it's kind of a. Uh, so there's only one club left in Paris. That's in uh, Montmartre. It's you know it's kind of cheap and cheerful. But I, mean, I kind of like it. It's old school, but uh, it's not big enough to, you know, Paris is a big city. It's not big enough to house the, you know, the, 
the masses that want to play poker. So they do have a few uh, big tournaments there. There's a WPT there every year, for example. But uh, they're, they're supposed to change Paris around. I think the, uh, the idea was... First of all, there was supposed to be a super casino on the Champs-Élysées. Then they changed their mind and they were going to do it like London and maybe have released six or eight casinos or, or licensed six or eight casinos to run poker. But, you know, the French being the French, it'll take them forever to do that. Meanwhile, if you want to get into a game in Paris, you've got to queue up outside the club for an hour before they open or turn up late and queue up for three hours. So it's kind of a bit of a mess at the moment. Well, listen, man, I, I hate to end on a sad note. I was sad to see when the Aviation Club closed, but I was very happy to see when you were signed by Party Poker. You you got a busy month, and I hope you enjoy the Irish Open coming up next week and, of course, the Party Poker Millions next month. I hope you win them both. Third of the 1999 main event, winner of late-night poker across the pond, my buddy Podrick Parkinson. Thanks for your time today, man.